did. Did she just say hello to us? I jolly well think she did. Oh, the nerve, the audacity, the cheek. <sighs> Welcome to the renowned English department of Cambridge. Comprehensive. <gasps> Where we further imagination, intellect, and inspiration. And enjoyment. <gasps> Here we have hundreds of students of all ages and abilities. And social classes. <gasps> oh, we encourage use of different reading materials, such as classics, romance, sci-fi, and Twitter. <gasps> Only in your house, not in the school. Good morning, class. Started. Novels out, no talking. And can I have a reader, please? Feet chilled with the pot, hands down, and heads up. Books away, pens at the ready, and let's get spelling. Hi, I'm Beatrice, and I'm year head of year seven. And I will nurture and guide you oh, as long as you get no demerit. I'm Mildred Potter. We, we all call her Miss. I'm Head of Behaviour Management, and I'll keep you on track, as long as you manage your behaviour. Hello, I'm Miss Stevenson. Don't you mean Maureen? <laughs> I'm the drama teacher, and I will put you on the stage and showcase all your talents, as long as you project your voice properly. Hi, I'm Gertrude. We all call her Gertie. Ooh! I'm head of pastoral care. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to come see me. As long as you're top hot and stung. Uh, I 
even got to introduce myself. My name is Victoria Ableton, and I'm the librarian here at Cambridge Comprehensive. You can borrow any book you like, as long as you return it by its return date. But since I am nice, I will let it slide. <coughs> Look at them. They do the same thing every day. They come in, happy as Larry. They talk to everyone they meet. Everyone, that is, except for me. They look down at me like I am nothing. Just the librarian, they say. I want to scream it from the rooftops. How dare they say that to me? <coughs> I am just as qualified as them. I don't just stack shelves, Mildred. That's right. I'm not afraid to say your name. I don't just stamp books, either. Drink tea all day? Never. Oh, and I do have a master's. <coughs> How would they know what I do? You saw them. They don't even look at me or offer me tea. For years, <coughs> I've kept up with their snobby behaviour. They say they like William Shakespeare. I have found their weakness, and I am using it against them. You see, this isn't the first folio of William Shakespeare. It is, in fact, just a cheap imitation. We will see how they will react when they find out the truth. Oh, you fools, you fools. <sighs> Ladies, it's a ride. <gasps>
I won't breathe a word, as long as you do as I bid. Do you want to come out to mine for tea? No. no. Are you sure? Well, I was going to go home. I want a box set of Call the Midwife, alone. <gasps> what if she tells? What if she tells? What if she tells? What if she tells? We'll be ruined. We'll be ruined. We'll be ruined. We'll be ruined. Oh, all right then. We'll come. Fantastic. Follow me. My car is parked just outside. <coughs> speech on my most prized possession has not been easy. For days I racked my brain trying to think of what it was that I cherished most in this world. I was looking for something physical, inanimate. Needless to say, I drew a blank. Then, in a moment of quiet, I had an epiphany. There is something that I definitely couldn't live without. My friendships. In every moment of darkness, they are my light. And without our complexities, we wouldn't I wouldn't be who I am today. Kim, the backbone of every daring adventure. She always knew how to show us, how to have a good time. And Claire, still couldn't tell her right from her left, and didn't know how to tire she loses. But without her comedy, we wouldn't have sat for hours and end with sore stomachs from laughing. And Bernie, the literary genius. She was so smart and always wanted to be a writer. Yes, we always knew that we would grow up and grow together, that we would be there for one another. It, it was a nice send-off, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I mean, could have been well worse. A whole lot more awkward now. I suppose so. Did you see Miss Kern there? She was in a bad way. Absolutely bawling her eyes out. Like, like, like her life depended on it. And here, girls, did you see that Mr. McGuire there? Girls, are you listening to me? Where's you? Hang on. I don't think you are. Listen, girls, he's very angry with me. I don't blame you if you are, but I just want to let you know that I never meant for all this to happen. Look, I'm not angry with you. No. Are you very sad then? Miss Claire, I, I just have this heaviness in my chest that just won't seem to go well. Who are the ones at the front of that awful yappy baby? Christ, have you ever seen such an ugly child? It's her half-sister. Absolutely bawling his eyes out. Curse. And I just thought it was lovely that the chick child to say a last goodbye, even if it was as ugly as the back end of the bus, and didn't have a clue what was going on around it. It's a her, a she. What is? The baby, it's a she. She got in contact with her dad. He's recently remarried, and they have a new baby now. Why did she not tell me? Why did you not tell me? Because we didn't. But why? I could have kept it a secret too, you know. Because we just didn't. Now can you be quiet? But why didn't you? Because sometimes you can be as irritating as hell and can you just shut your mouth for five minutes, please? Third 
13 years. 13 years I made that one phone call. That one phone call I thought would change my life. Funny enough, I even thought it would make my mom happier. Turns out she hates him. She said him leaving was like a huge weight lifted off her shoulders. He asked to meet, you know, on Saturday at 12. But is after 13 years enough to meet the man who walked out in his wife and kid? Listen, I'm not sure whether to meet him or not. I'd want you to come with me, but don't tell Claire. It's a small town and she has a big mouth. wanted to be a writer. I don't remember. Oh no, you do, you do. And remember, she decided to tell us on that geography field trip. And we were laughing so hard that you farted and the whole class heard. I can't remember. Oh no, you do, you do. You let off such a ripper. She said she doesn't remember. Oh no, you do. Hey girls, it's weird her dad getting in touch with her after all these years. You know, with her mum and all. Leave it, will you? I'm just saying, she could have gone completely nuts after a while. If you're right, and it's all genetic, and you'll end up like a straight lace teacher like your mum. Oh, well look at you. Little Miss Quiet has found a voice, and I bet that you'll end up like your ma, cleaning toilets for the rest of your life. <laughs> Why are you saying those inappropriate things, Claire? It's a can pick the most stupid thing to say just to know everyone. Do us all a favour and shoot your gob for five minutes. Sorry. Doesn't matter, honestly. I'm not stupid and I don't mean to be inappropriate. It's just, I've always been like that. I know. Sure, here. Remember, I used to do the teacher's head in. I remember. You're always such a messer. Okay, if you're all sitting on the mat, we're going to start with story time today. Claire? Claire? Claire, are your ears not working? Because I think I just told everyone to sit in the mat. <coughs> I don't think so, Miss Current. Well, how did you know I was talking to you then? And for the last time, it's Mrs. Kern. She always does that when she's a bone girl. <coughs> okay, well now you're all sitting on the mat. I'm going to tell you the story of Christmas. I've heard it, miss. Yes, I know you have heard it, Brianie. We have all heard it, dear. And we are all going to hear it again. Why, miss? Because we are. It's a very special story. So special, in fact, that it is well worth repeating. Miss? Miss, can I go to the toilet, miss? Oh, you're just in from lunchtime, Beth. Why didn't you go at lunchtime? I didn't need to go there, miss. Oh, go on, then. I need to go to the toilet, too, miss. Y yes, miss. And miss, I need to go to the toilet, too. I I'm dying to go. You're not dying to go to the toilet, Claire. Children in her countries are dying. You're just you're just urgently needing to go to the toilet, which you urgently don't need to do. Now, sit up, smiley children. Nice straight backs, eyes this way, and we will begin. It was a cold, cold night. Many, many years ago. What do you mean? <laughs> Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. Joseph walked ahead holding off his lamp to light the way. Hey, torches in those days, miss. No, Kimberly, they didn't have torches in those days. Mary was on a donkey that walked oh so slowly. Clip clop, clip clop, he went. I think he knew he was carrying a very precious burden that night. Miss, <coughs> we have next door to this burden. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, miss, miss she does. I saw her before. <laughs> Very different burden, girls. This burden is a very heavy weight. <coughs> this burden's a heavy weight. Oh my God. <laughs>
Mr. Noir. No, do you remember that geography field trip? One minute he would be looking at igneous rocks and then suddenly he was there, looming over us. Something you'd like to share with the group ladies? No, no sir. sir. No pearls of wisdom you'd like to pass <coughs> on? No. How about you, Miss Goodman? Knocking it off? I could have sworn I heard chatting coming down from where you're standing. Was I imagining it, Miss Bacon? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. <laughs> Are you sure I have? I have yet lost all my marbles? No, sir. What about you two in the end? Something funny. You're year 12 students. You should be listening, watching, and paying attention. All I see right now is a bunch of slackers who will not be very successful in their GCSEs this year. I'm thinking how much I'd love to. Tell him what I think of him. Take him down off his high, bloody horse. Knock him in the next week. Make him beg <laughs> for forgiveness. From us. From me, until he sees it. My, My way. There's nothing else for it. Lunchtime tension every day next week, ladies. We'll get you working whether you like it or not. Yes, sir. They call this place a city. A city? What a joke. It must have been April Fool's Day when your consul decided to apply for a city status. There's nothing to do around here, except hang around here in the fields for a bit. So, I just said to him, you know what, we are not going out. I can talk to who I like, when I like. So I would just much prefer <coughs> to stop texting me. No way, and what did he say? He cried. <laughs> and I knew if I tried to explain myself, he would just cry louder. And I knew I couldn't give him a hug because we were at the window seat in Friar Tux. Anyone could have seen us. So I just got up and left. So let me get this straight. You went with him to Friar Tux, he bought you your food, you ate your food, and then you dumped him and left him there crying. That's cold, Claire. I'd call it heartless. Listen, a girl has got to eat. No, I get it. You're being cruel and being kind. Exactly, Brian. You see, this woman always understands me. And here, speaking of understanding, what about hitting the bell this Friday night with me? I don't know. My mum's not saying the best, you know, and I've got no money. Well, I'll lend you some. I'm sure I'll get us a lift up and down. You won't need much money then. How about you girls? I can't. I'm studying. I'm a margin on my desk. Wait a minute, Claire, so you. <coughs> you nutter. You shouldn't be going out. These are important exams. I know. I know, girls, but... No matter how much I study, the results are still the same. And I have hated that subject from the day I started it. And anyway, I don't need TCSEs where I'm going to study Shakespeare and the likes. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? You still need your GCSE. Well, excuse me, Miss Smarty Pants. Some of us are all not gifted writers like you. And just because you enjoy studying and passing all your exams doesn't mean it's easy for the rest of us. Listen, girls, I know these are my friends, but you don't have to worry about me. Coming out tomorrow night will help take your mind off your mum. Doesn't your auntie come over at the weekends to help you with her? Yeah. Exactly. No excuses. Now you won't let me down, Kim. Good. That's it. You can come round to mine at about seven. Oh my God, it's half six. My dad told me to have his tea started free. Listen, I'm gonna head on. Yeah, I'm gonna head on my too. You won't let me down, girls. Claire, even if we didn't want to go, you wouldn't take no for an answer. We know you too well, Claire. See it. I'm away here too, Claire. You coming? I'm sure the cows don't want to hear any more of your speeches. Yes, I'm coming. Barney, you know I try my best in school. I know. People say I act a wag, but that's just a 
cover up how crap I feel about my grades. Listen, Claire, you are talented in so many other ways. You're a terrific actress and great craft. Honestly, I wish I had your confidence. I die off whenever I have to speak in front of people. Say it on. Honestly, Claire, words it comes so easy to you. Even, you're even great at talking to people going out when it's so close to their exams. True, true. But it's just my mum. She makes me feel like such a disappointment. You know, with her being a teacher and that, it's written all over her face. I'm sure your mum loves you no matter what your grades. And wait you see, she would have a smile plastered on her face when you're up collecting your Oscar. I don't think you're right, you know. Thank you, one and all. I would just like to thank a few people for this very special award. My agent, my hundreds and thousands of fans who always believed in me. And one very special person who believed in me when the others didn't. My best friend, Bryony. Claire, you do my head and I'm away here. See you tomorrow. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? Come on, come on. What catchy ladies? Look, it takes time to transform into this. You talk about stealing the audience, sir. What? I'm agreeing with her. Kim, you look great. <laughs> Oh, come on, it's only five minutes 
side of the road, and anyway, we have no money for a taxi home. I don't know. I'm not too sure either. Oh, get in. Claire pushes us into the back seat, me in the middle with no seatbelt. From, from the moment he started off the car, I knew this wasn't going to end well. I, I didn't realise just how drunk he was until he started swerving into different lanes of the motorway. thought that we would be there for one another, that we would grow up and grow together. 